Hey, welcome back to Two Super Guys Trade Stocks. I am Dylan. And I'm Vinny. We're going to take a look at the CCL Carnival Cruise Line chart. Um, I, I did a video last week. I think this is a great short and it keeps on setting up to be an even better short. There is one caveat. There's a little bit of an issue here, but uh, we're going to take a look at it. Two Super Guys Trade Stocks. All right, so I did a video on this a little while ago, uh, last week. Mm -hmm. um, I said I said Piton and Carnival, right? Yeah, Piton and Carnival. Yeah. Uh, those are the two you called the bearish trades on. So I canceled Piton. I took a like a thirty dollar loss. That's why these specific type of puts are great because how often do you do options and take a loss on thirty bucks when the upside's five hundred? Not often, right? Okay. And I'm going to go into why the, the downside is so low. But here is the Carnival Cruise Line chart. Now, I'm not saying they're a bad company. You know, I'm not shorting them like Nicola, right? <laughs> they got dealt kind of a rough hand with COVID. Didn't do too well. I, I, do you remember how much debt they're in? I can't remember. A lot. Yeah, I, I don't remember. We, we've done the valuation video a couple of times. And, like, you know, people kind of think, like, oh, you know, $60 stock, it'll be back to $60. But if you actually adjust for the amount of debt and the number of shares they've had that dilute, uh, their their upside is nowhere near what it seems on at first glance. Mm -hmm. it's a little bit I feel like it was, like, that. 10 bucks. But Morgan Stanley just issued a – they increased their price target, so they got a bump on their news. But they in price in, – Increased it from six to seven dollars. <laughs> so I mean, they're they're way over that right now. Which is still, yeah, what forty percent below they're currently trading. So yeah, 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 yeah. So this chart is going back to June. Okay, now I have two red lines. I have this eleven sixty seven red line and this eleven. So if you look in the daily, we had a bunch of support. We broke through it, and we have not been able to puncture now. This is not a to the penny line. You can see that these have different values all varying about six cents. So it's more of a zone, if you will. Okay. Okay. Now as we zoom in, this 200 moving average is still buttoned up against the price. We did set kind of a, a high price um, here, but then we got shot down. I'm gonna show you the one weakness of this trade. but. Here's the great part. If you, so I'm, you do whatever you want. I'm not telling you anything. What I am doing, I bought puts, okay? Just like I did on Piton. I am not, I bought puts that are expiring six months out or a year out or something. I am not planning on holding them that long at all. Mm -hmm. um, but if the stock breaks 1170, I'm just gonna sell. I'm just gonna get rid of my puts. I'm not holding on to these. That's how you get in trouble with options. The actual risk is fantastic because if this shoots back down to fair value, which is around $7, this is a 500 plus trade. Okay. And I'm risking, like, I think I'm down $20 a contract right now. That's, <laughs> that's not that much. That's very yeah. low. So it's, it's more in the fact that your, your stop loss, zone so exit close. zone is so close to the current selling price that's why you're saying that this is such a, a asymmetric risk reward kind of trade I, that, that okay i get what you're saying because like you know from a technical standpoint you are seeing like much of the market right now you're starting to see the technicals turning back around where you're you're seeing the uh you know the, the kind of you know golden cross like type events and it looks like we're yeah. a close to that level basically we're we're definitely at a decision point in the market see the video uh we put up yesterday about that because you know this this upcoming week is huge but hey you know if it doesn't work it doesn't work there's always a chance it doesn't work i mean it probably won't work this specific this particular trade like 30 40 percent of the time but the risk is fantastic here's the problem <laughs> Looking on the five minute chart, let me move my face uh, from yesterday. This volume sucks for me, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you look at the five minute intraday chart, there was big buyers coming out of nowhere on all these big pushes up. That does not bode well for me. Now sure, you had selling at the end of the market, but kind of a lot of stocks sold at the end of the market. So that might've been kind of just a market move. The SPY itself did this. 
So this part is a little alarming. It's definitely more than double volume, um, but the daily just looks so juicy. <laughs> so good. I'm going to yeah. show you. Uh, Vinny's going to talk to you. What yeah, this? so th this is currently the, the, the kind of time zone that Dylan was targeting here, like the, the June expiration. Um, there, there's quite a, a, a fair amount of contracts open here for people that don't like look at the options chain, basically. So strike prices are in between here. You have the bid and ask spread, the most recent trade for the particular thing. You have puts all over here on the right side, calls over here on the left. So what Dylan is looking at is these like 11 to 1250 kind of put contracts expiring in June. Um, I was saying there's a fair amount of liquidity up here, the 1250 contract at least. And then uh, I actually traded it from the opposite direction. I did shorter term where I actually went on the call side and sold it in the money you know, call credit spread, meaning I, I sold, I want to say it was the 10 and bought the 1250. So I have like a 250 wide you know, strike there. And that, that kind of limits, the, in theory, my exposure to the trade right. as far as risk wise. And just to clarify, mine is actually... January 2024, and it's a seven dollar strike, seven fifty strike. So, gotcha. if you look at, but you can calculate how much you lose, right? So the eleven dollar put costs one hundred thirty eight, and then the twelve fifty put costs two twenty four. So mm -hmm. we're at about eleven ish right now. Actually, ex exactly, we're at eleven dollars right now. So theoretically, you would lose ninety dollars a contract if it goes to twelve fifty, but you're not waiting until 1250. If it passes that red line, and you can even make it much more specific, you could... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, 1170 was basically your number, right? Yeah, so I, I mean, that. you could go here and, I mean, make it 1148, you can make it 1150. It's a very tight stop loss. So you don't see these often. I'm looking at Home Depot. Home Depot may be doing this too, but not yet. Interesting. So. All right, guys. So let us know what you think about this trade. All right, guys. Have a good one.